1994, Michael Hobson sent out a postcard. He sent it out to everybody in the industry, the record business, the audio files, the high-end audio stores, the magazines like the Absolute Sound stereo file, and all the writers, all the reviewers, and all the people in the audio file business. So this is what the postcard looked like. So you can imagine in 1994 getting this postcard in the mail. And on the back it said, question, what's going to be the big surprise at the WCES 1994? To find out, Ying Tan and Michael Hobson of Classic Records invite you to attend the press conference to announce the biggest vinyl reissue series of the decade. So everybody got this. So I mean, it was a buzz. Everybody's like calling each other, hey man, what's going on? Did you get that postcard with the question mark? You know, called Don at RTI. Hey, Don, what's up with this? I don't know, man. You know anything about it? No, I don't know anything about it. Michael Frommer, hey, man, did you get that? Yeah, that's just, man, I can't wait for the CES to see what the hell it is. So a couple nights before the CES, Michael Hobson and Yang called me. They said, Chad, we want to invite you to dinner on Thursday or Friday night, whatever it was. We're going to go to Spago's at Caesar's Palace. Just me, you, and Ying. So, I mean, man, the anticipation, it was like, wow. You know, like, what in the world did these guys pull off? What's coming out? This is unbelievable. Just can't wait to see what it is. So, I mean, they just played it off, you know, just invite you. Well, man, what is it? Well, we're going to have dinner. We're going to explain the whole thing. Just hold your horses. We'll have dinner at Spago's at 8 or whatever. So I show up, it's just me, and it's just them two. So we sit down for dinner, you know, and, um, you know, and I'm thinking, must be something, because Hobson don't splurge like this, you know. I mean, typically we'd probably be at, uh, you know, uh, you know, In-N-Out Burger or something, you know. So what what's going on? So there's this red you know, folder, and he pulls out this, and he put this on the table. And I mean, these two album covers, you know, slap you about the face. Everybody was trying to license the RCAs. Nobody could get them. You know, I was trying, everybody wanted them. Hobson and Ying pulled it off. So Classic Records present the RCA Living Stereo Limited Edition. Classic Records is proud to announce reissuing a select number of the famous RCAs. Release schedule include 12 titles in 1994 and 12 additional titles in 95. Classic Records was born with the vision to provide die-hard music vinyl lover the highest quality process and materials possible. And you know, then they they show you the list of. Uh, what's going to come out you know it's just it was just unbelievable and it, Chad we want you to be our exclusive distributor so I started taking a thousand off the press and then I went I moved up to two thousand off the press uh, later in 1995 they announced uh, 10 verbs and uh, and here's their first catalog this is the 1995, not, excuse me, 1994-95 catalog. They show the whole process of making records. You know, what Mike did was made sure to get the original master tapes. It's nothing better than that. Hired one of the best mastering engineers, Bernie Grunman, to cut the records. Ed Tobin at Plate and RTI to Press. Stout and printing for the jackets. And he, he picked great titles, musically and sonically, and did everything to the highest quality. So, you know, we were their exclusive distributor. We grew with them, or they grew with us, and we just kept, they just kept 
I think they did more than 100 different RSVA living stereos in the history. They did maybe 15 verves. Then they started doing Zeppelin and The Who and Peter Gabriel and Deja Vu, a lot of great Atlantic. Uh, then they started doing Blue Notes, you know, some of the greatest records. This is when nobody was releasing records. Nobody. Okay, you know, all these Johnny Come Latelys, I mean, we'll accept them to the party, but most of them were running. They couldn't run fast enough away from the LP and get into CD. Uh, there was a few people, Michael Hobson, Michael Fremer, myself. We were just diving into records just as hard as we could, just, just trying to buy everything we could and keep, keep them alive. And, and so Hobson was making them and I was selling them. And so in about 2010, I bought classic records. I, you know, again, I was his biggest dealer throughout the whole time. So of course he called me first and uh, I bought it. What was it, nine years later, eight years later, Michael called me to sell me his archive collection that he kept for himself. But Mike did a real good job, or his employees did a pretty good job helping him keep two of each of the records he made. And he made a little sticker that one of two, two of two on everything. So it's behind me here. So I think there's like a hundred boxes, three to 4,000 records. Now these are the first records. I don't want to say the first records off the press because those would be test pressings. And uh, we got some of those as well. But these are the first final product. And it's fixing to go on sale shortly. So I'm going to go pull one to show you the, the, uh, his little stickers. Okay, so here's, I'll just pull out a couple of examples. This is uh, the Royal Ballet done just like the original Royal Ballet with the, the, uh, the canvas box. The original of this goes for about 1500 and so does the reissue. As you can see here, archive one of two, and then two of two. Here's a uh, archive one of two. Here's the Led Zeppelin set he did with the first four records. He called it volume one, and he put the records in there. Then he put as a, a test pressing of Stairway to Heaven, cut at 45. Uh, It was kind of blue. So, I mean, I'll just give you an example of some of the goodies in there. It'll be interesting to see how long they last.